Okay, I've done like 20 takes of this already because I hate the sound of my own voice and I keep stammering and stuttering. Not sure what to say. So this is the take I'm going to use no matter what. Uh, I'm going to stick with it no matter how many ums and ahs and awkward pauses. Uh, um, um, um. Because uh, I gotta get better at this and I just gotta you know, stick with it and not start over every 10 seconds. So, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Mike Fye. I'm a fantasy illustrator. And this is a drawing of a character named Milktooth, submitted by Joe. Um, Milktooth and his trusty companion, Bongo the Donkey, who I'm scribbling in right now. Uh, this video is sped up. This part is sped up about 10 times. Obviously, well, it should be obvious that I can't drive this fast. Um, I'm in Photoshop and I'm using the default chalk brush as always. Pretty much use that for all my drawings and paintings. Uh, just really comfortable with it. I don't like messing around with custom brushes too much. Although I often feel that I should experiment a little more. It might speed things up, especially for painting. Uh, but for drawing, I stick with this and I'm really happy with it. It looks natural enough. Somewhere between um, a marker and a pencil. Uh, I just adjust the opacity and the size, but never the brush. Unless I'm doing something weird like, I don't know, smoke or something, I might use a, a soft airbrushy kind of thing. Um, so after I scribble in the basic form, I go over top, as I'm doing right now. I usually start with the head. It's, you know, once you get the head in and you're happy with it, the rest of the drawing kind of comes together a little bit easier. Uh, Joe requested that Milktooth be examining some sort of trinket, which I'll probably be drawing in soon. I can't remember. Um, but uh, that's what he's holding in his hands there. I uh, don't know what it's supposed to be. Some sort of device that he's twisting and opening and inspecting. Uh, there it is. Um, yeah, drawing in the gloves. You know, none, none of these, uh, you know, brush strokes or marks are precious, so if I don't like the way something looks, I'll just use the lasso tool, grab it, stretch it, delete it, you know, I'll move it like there, move the hand around, try to adjust his posture a little bit. Sometimes the scale is a little bit off, and, uh, yeah, I love to use, I love to draw it digitally just for that reason, because my sense of scale is not perfect, and if I had to adjust the size of his hand with a pencil, obviously it would have to erase everything and draw it again and again until it's right. Um, yeah, that's the, the big advantage of digital painting for me. Drawing in his uh, big floppy boot, trying to figure out how big a dwarf's feet should be. Here are some vials of liquid that Joe requested be on his uh, belt. And back legs, some tassel -y things. This dwarf is really well equipped with all his adventuring gear. He's got a bunch of packs. Uh, yeah, lasso tool, just adjusting his stance a little bit. It wasn't wide enough. I think, as I recall, I had pictures of donkeys up on my phone as I was drawing this, and I would refer to that just to get the basic shape. I don't know, uh, <laughs> it's a weird term, I don't know my donkey anatomy very well, so, but luckily this, uh, this guy, Bongo, is supposed to be really scruffy, so any parts of anatomy that I'm unclear about, I just sort of cover up with scruffy fur. Yeah, give him some sort of harness. Yeah, just going around. Oh, there's a grappling hook of some kind. 
sharp bow strapped to his back. I don't know how he could possibly reach that, but, you know, he's got to carry everything at once. And once I'm happy with that, I lighten it and start refining. That's how I do most of my drawings. This is the, th you know, the third layer. The first was really rough, and then I lightened it and drew over top. Tightened up a little bit, and then when I'm happy with that, I lighten that layer and draw over top. And this will be the final layer, but I could, if I was so inclined, finish this layer, lighten it up, and, and do something really tight and detailed. But uh, this is a good place to stop. I think it's loose enough, and uh, I just like the... It's a good happy ground between something overly rendered and something too rough and loose. Happy middle ground, I mean. Uh, yep, drawing in his obligatory facial hair. Um, I've met, as I mentioned before in other videos, I like to keep uh, black on the, uh, what do you call it, the foreground color and white on the background color. And with the push of a button on my Wacom pen, I just flip back and forth between those and it's kind of like erases things out really quickly. I don't have to change tools. I just go back and forth between black and white. And I think I had something, yeah, some weird layer issue there but that I fixed. Um, yeah, so I draw white to erase or to lighten an area and then click back to black and draw normally with line and go back and forth like that the whole time and it's really quick and easy and a seamless process for me. Figuring out that hand, I think it's kind of long, but I might more or less fix it later. I think that, eh, it's hard to tell. Uh, studded leather, that's what Joe requested. Pretty standard issue D&D type armor. There's a I darkened it on a new la um, multiplier layer, about 70%, and then erased some bits out for some highlights. Rotate my canvas so I can draw that sword straight up and down just to get it a little more accurate. Scabbard and hilt, trying to just do some fun little ornamental details. Uh, I think this short sword is named Fang, and it actually has fangs along us, like a serrated edge. Kind of a cool little plus one weapon there. Uh, Vials of Liquid that Joe requested be on his belt. Grappling Hook. He is a rogue, so he's, you know, always got to get into places where he shouldn't. Just coming up with some sort of strap to hold his grappling hook and rope. It's fun coming up with details like that. Figuring out how everything would attach and you can imagine you can't, in this world, you can't usually buy your equipment just the way you want it. You probably have to adjust it yourself and all these guys know how to sew and patch things. There's another custom side satchel that's holding, I don't know, scrolls or bits of text. Another vial of liquid. I drew that straight line just as a guide to make sure my bottle was more or less symmetrical. I don't know what else to say. It's just a rendering process at this point. Doing the same thing over and over again, just tightening all the areas that I've already drawn. I like to quickly hatch in the shading, as you can see. But it's personal preference. I don't. I try not to cross the hatches. I think, I don't know, cross hatching just kind of a dated look 
to me, to my eye at least, even though some people can really do good things with it. I like to just, uh, I don't know, do uncross hatching. Rendering in his boots a little better, big floppy things. Adding details as I go. Little patch. In the description, Joe asked for his armor to be like high quality but a little bit worn and well used. Didn't want to make it too scruffy, but you know, he knows how to make repairs on his on his gear. Knows how to take care of it and keep it for a long time. Uh, what else can I talk about? I'm just doing the same thing over and over, refining and zooming in, zooming out, looking around, flipping the canvas. I don't know, you've probably seen a million artists do this. I don't know if I have much to offer that's different, but I know I like to watch process videos, so I thought I'd make one or two of my own. Um, if, if anyone's watching these and I'm glossing over things that you're wondering how I did it or why I did it, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment or something or any suggestions about how I could make these better. Um, kind of just doing it for fun, but yeah, it'd be really awesome if anyone could get something out of it. Oh, uh, so I showed Joe a rough before I continued on to the final rendering and he told me that, oh, he, uh, what do you call it? His dwarf doesn't have a beard because he's a master of disguise and so I did a patch to show him what it might look like without the beard um, but in the end we both agreed that the beard just looks a lot cooler and more dwarf like so we kept it yeah, the bits of torn pages as per Joe's description I'm not entirely sure what they're from but you know some detail from an adventure this guy's been on with uh, characters that are so over encumbered with stuff and big floppy armor it's hard to get the anatomy just right but at the same time it doesn't really matter that much if you don't know uh, you know where his hip bone should be who cares because there's just like a ton of stuff covering it you just gotta get everything in the approximate right place. Like I suppose while I was uh, doing the initial block in that I could have drawn his anatomy a little more accurately but I just go for it and you know draw all the, all the bulky backpacks and stuff at the same time as I'm drawing arms and legs and his posture. Another little detail I forgot from his description, he carries a blackjack, so just adding that in there. Some more pouches or something behind it. Yeah, just rendering out a little chest that Bongo's carrying. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about these things. Here's a 
some scruffy, I don't know if I already mentioned this, like, I don't know what donkey anatomy is <laughs> too clearly, so any parts that I'm unclear about I can just draw lots of scruff and uh, cover up my lack of understanding of the anatomy. It's close enough. I was looking at a couple of pictures of donkeys while I was drawing this. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. I'm just, just doing the same thing in different parts, just fleshing out all the details. I uh, rotate the canvas a little bit so that when I'm trying to nail the perspective on that uh, chest, it's a little easier. some sort of throw blanket over top of the doggy's back. That's a wig back down there. I don't know if I always talked about that or not. Milktooth is a master of disguise, hence... I think he has like a secondary female persona, which is why Joe is hoping he could be shown without the beard. But, you know, maybe the beard's a prosthetic in, in itself and... You know, a dwarf walking around with no beard, a male dwarf walking around with no beard might draw too much attention. Plus, you know, maybe female dwarfs in D&D world have beards. Who knows? On a new layer, darkened up that beard. It's a multiply layer, then I'm just erasing out some highlights. Cleaning it up, checking it to see if I like it darker or lighter, and yeah, I liked it darker. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, yeah, give me some suggestions if you want me to talk about some other aspects of the process, because I don't know what else to say. Um, I guess certain things are just come natural to me, so maybe I'm glossing over something that you really want to know about, please let me know. And I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Thank you.